Today, I want to take a look at an often neglected group of tools found in Photoshop, and they're found in Photoshop's Blur Gallery. The title of this episode is Bringing Focus with Creative Bokeh, or Bokeh. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, I want to use creative, how do you say it, Boca, bokeh? Well, let's ask Siri. Hey Siri, how do you pronounce B-O-K-E-H? Here's an answer from the hphotovideo.com. The proper pronunciation of Boca is Bo, as in Bozo, and K, as in Kennedy. Okay, so I'm assuming that is bokeh. I think even Siri is confused because at first she said, here's how you pronounce Boca. And then she proceeds to tell us it's pronounced like bokeh. So she says it both ways too. I'm assuming it is probably bokeh, but I like to call it boca. I think I'll call it boca. Let me start out by explaining what I mean by adding focus to your subject through creative boca. Now we have this image here. This is just a sock image and it's a cool image, but my eye wants to wander all over the place here. But if I use creative boca and I'll show you like this, see how I can train your eye into my subject i want you to look right here and that's what the creative bokeh does for you now this layer above here is just a color grading layer it's just basically a curves adjustment i just lightened up the midtones i thought the midtones were a little dark in case you're wondering now let's look at our next image on this image it's another flower image and i like it but these uh, buds up here whatever you want to call them they're distracting me as well as this other flower down in here. But check it out after some creative bokeh. Now we're trained and focused on to the subject here, which is this flower. Again, here is the before and here is the after. Now let's look at another example. On this image, we have a cool engine of a car and it's already has some areas out of focus and the out of focus areas are causing us to look at this area of the engine. And now let's see what happens if we add even more bokeh, see if we can focus ourselves more on the part of the engine that we want you to see right in here. Doesn't that really help? This is creative bokeh. And now for the final example, this is the intro screen image, and it's a cool image, but our eyes are wandering all over this scene here, and we want to focus our attention onto our subject, onto our face and onto our hands working on our laptop, and with creative bokeh effects, we can achieve that. Now, I'm going to show you how we create these effects. We're going to start out with this flower image, but I just want to say up front that this type of creative bokeh effect will work on any style of photography. You just got to be creative and decide if that technique or that effect would work on a particular image or not. And you never know until you try these things, but when you really want to focus your attention on a subject, think creative bokeh effects. Now, I highly recommend that you work on a separate pixel layer, so I'm just going to duplicate my background layer. I'm going to do a Command or Control J, or if you have the TK8 uh, plugin for Photoshop and you have the CX or Combo panel open, you can click on this button right here, and that will duplicate your background layer. And then come up to Filter, and you're going to look for the Blur Gallery. There's two I'm going to be looking at today, Fill Blur and Iris Blur. I think I'll start out with Iris Blur, so let's click on Iris Blur. This is pretty easy to use, but follow along. I'll show you some tips. It defaults with this oval shape here. Now you'll notice in the center, we have this particular circle and you'll notice you have this white bar here. Now, if you drag this white bar around, see how the outside of the circle or the oval gets a lot blurrier. Or if I drag it the whole way back around to say zero, there's no effect on it whatsoever, okay? So we can adjust the amount of blur here, or you could come over to the side panel over here and adjust the blur this way as well. It does the same thing as if you were to come here and adjust this. So whichever way you prefer, usually I use it here because I'm working on this, okay? Now you can take the center circle and you can move this around. Now you can adjust the shape by coming out to the outer edges and you can like make it smaller or larger. See the square right here? You can make it more like a square shape or more like a circle. And then these circles here, see the this circle? There's four, one, two, three, and four. You can take these and this is the 
this is where it is uh, out in focus here, and then it slowly starts to graduate out of focus in this zone here. Now you can take this and change that transitional zone like this by adjusting these, which is really cool. When you click on one, they all work together, but here's a little trick. If you hold your Option or Alt key down, you can adjust them independently, which is really nice if you need to fine tune your adjustment. So I can bring this one in more, okay? Or if, again, if you just, grab one and you don't hold alt option or alt down they'll all drag together which is nice now let's say i just want this center i believe these are hydrangeas in focus the center flower here so let me uh make this circle smaller like this and adjust it around and you want what's pleasing to the eye now i don't mind a little bit out of focus here i may make the circle a little bit larger and even larger than that and i think if you get on these circles yeah, if you click on this circle right here, where you see where it turns to uh, a curve, where you can adjust, where you can, you know, adjust the angle. Also, if you grab one of those, you can make it more like an actual circle itself. Okay, when you're not on one of these circles, then you make the overall shape larger, okay, or smaller, depending what. But you can adjust the uh, how much of a circle or how much of an oval it is here. And I hope that makes sense. But I might make it a little bit larger and something like that. And then again, if you click in this area, you can drag it around. Now, if you want the outer flowers to be more out of focus, we can just come here and go like this. You know, like that's too much, I think. But, you know, you're the artist here. and Whatever you deem necessary, that's what it's going to be. And I think something like that is really cool. Now, you can click this preview here. You can uncheck it. So you can see the before, but you can see how our eye goes all over the image. But then when I... Click on the create a bokeh effect. Now you can see that we're going right into this flower. And again, we can increase that blur over here on the outside of the flower, or we can do it here, whichever we want. Now, if we want to, you see the little thumbtack here with a little plus on it. We can click and add another one of those circles. And again, we can adjust its shape, whatever we want, more like a square or an oval. And now when we adjust the blur, we're adjusting the blur everywhere. But you notice we're taking blur off of here. So you can get creative with this. So you might want to say, well, I like this here, you know. I might bring some focus onto this one. And maybe I'll put another one right here. And I'll make this one smaller. Well, so I'm going to drag right here. Drag this in. Maybe move this over. So maybe I want to include this in as well. So now if you'll notice, we have this circle. We have this circle. And in the center of the circles, it's in focus. And the same with this circle right here. So everywhere in the center is in focus. And then you could grab any one of these rings and start to adjust the overall focus, the out of focus areas or the bokeh areas like that. Okay. And now we can take a look. Here is our before and here is our after. So that's kind of nice, right? But if you don't want these, all you have to do is make sure they're active and just uh, type your delete key in your keyboard and they go away. So let's get rid of this one and let's get rid of this one. And let's just keep this one here. And let's make sure we like that blur amount. Is it too much? That's too much. So let's just back it off a little bit. Maybe I like that 17. Okay, so here is the before. And here is after. But isn't that a cool effect? And it's easy to do. We're going to work with Field Blur next, but I'll save that for another image. So let's go ahead and click OK, and that'll send us right back into Photoshop. And now we can see here is our before, and here is our after. So that's bringing focus to your subject with the use of Creative Bokeh. So now we're looking right at the center hydrangea, I believe it is. Let's move on to this example. I really like this flower image. Again, it's a stock image. And I just want to take some of these background buds out of focus and take this flower underneath the main flower a little bit out of focus. I already went ahead and duplicated the background layer. We're going to come up to filter, but we're going to try that other one in the blur gallery. And that was called field blur. I'll show you how that one works. Now this works differently than our blur, but I really enjoy this one as well. But you'll notice I have this circle here, this point and everything is out of fo focus. And you'll notice here the blur is at 15 pixels. Now I can adjust that blur amount by adjusting this, okay? And remind me not to forget to show you this thing about noise, because this is very important when you're adding blur. I forgot to show you on the first image, but I'll remember to do it hopefully this time. And if I forget, please let me know. Here's how I like to use the field blur. I like to take this 
white bar that I'll, I'll call it a bar, bring it the whole way back to it goes to zero, meaning there is no blur. But check this out. Now remember, I got the little thumbtack with the plus on it, so I can come here and click this. And notice that goes out of focus by 15 pixels. So I can come and pepper this with little control points like here and here, maybe one over here, one over here. And I can adjust the amounts of blur on each one of these. So say for instance, I want this one to go way out of focus. And on this one, I want it just to go out about there. You know, I'm looking for a pleasing look here. And I'll come back and bring detail back here in a second, but I love this, check this out. And let's maybe make this one a little more out of focus, maybe not as much as the other ones. Let's come up here and drop another one down. Let's take it out. And how about over here we take this way out and I'll throw another one here. And I'll just keep peppering this thing till it looks the way I want it to look. Now over here, I'm gonna add more blur there, okay? And now you recall I wanted to take this bottom flower out of focus a little bit. So I'm going to put one here and just a little bit. That 15 pixels, I'm going to put one here, one in this area, maybe one over here and here. And that looks pretty good. And I'll put another one here and take it out of focus a little bit more. So far, it's looking really good now. But check this out. I want to bring these areas back in focus. So I'm going to drop a point right here. And now I'm going to pull this bar up into zero, meaning it's not out of focus. You see how I just brought that back? That's pretty cool, wouldn't you say? And I'm going to put one right here, and I'm going to pull this back to say zero. Look at that. And how about one over here? And I mean, I'll take this one the whole way back to zero. I'll take it slightly out of focus maybe to like a three pixel blur and I'll come down on this one and let's pull it back. Again, I think I'm going to go to two pixels, but I'll put one right here, take it the whole way back to zero to bring that to focus. I'll put one here, bring it back to zero, but you see what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of adding these points and pulling back off and pulling the blur off, I should say. And I'm going to come here and I'll take the blur maybe back to about a three and let's come over here and I'll take it back again, maybe to a two. Okay. So check that out. Here is the before and here's the after. Oh, and look, I need to make this go out of focus here a little bit because that doesn't look natural. So I'm going to put another point right here and I'm going to pull this out of focus too, like right like that. Let's take a look. Here is the before and here is the after. I might take it out of focus a little bit more. I may even throw another point right here just to make sure I really got this out of focus. Okay, and I think I've got it. But again, we've come from here and we've went to here. Okay, and then you could take these and drag them around. If I want to come up here a little bit more, I can do that. Or if I decide... You know what? I don't want any blur on that right there. So what do you think? Now I'm working pretty quick here, but take your time. But you can put these points everywhere. But say I wanted this area to go way out of focus here. I could do this. Just check it out, right? And I can come down in here and take this way out of focus. So you can really play around. I'm going to put a point over here as well and take that out of focus. And maybe bring this one over. But see how see how the area comes into focus when I start to drag that? Isn't that cool? And yeah, I think that's it. I may just pull this back a little bit like that. What do you think? And I know it's got dots all over it, but I think I'm happy with it. I almost forgot to tell you, but I heard somebody saying, Dave, don't forget to tell us about the noise. So let's go ahead and zoom in because the out-of-focus areas or the bokeh areas would probably have a little bit of noise in them to make this look natural. So what I'm going to do is add grain. Now you'll notice we can add grain here. You can add uniform grain, Gaussian, or just plain old grain. Now I recommend grain. It looks more uh, photographic, I should say. And look, see, I can add a lot of grain in there. I'll really jack it up so you can really see it. You see that? That's way too much. And I only need just a slight amount, really just to sell this effect to those that are viewing it. And basically what I'm trying to do is match the grain in the in-focus part. So 
it doesn't have a lot of noise so i'm just going to add that little bit of grain right like that and you can change the size of the grain by adjusting the slider if you drag it to the right you'll make the grain bigger and you can make the grain more rough if you move this over or smoother you can even add color you can add uh you can add bokeh effects. It says motion effects, but that only works on path blur and spin blur. I'll save that for another tutorial. And then effects, you can add bokeh effects if you want to. I don't really do that too often. I'm just adding a little bit of noise. Let me zoom back out. But I didn't want to forget to tell you about noise. And on that first image, I should have added the noise too. Always add a little bit of noise, you know, and try to match the noise to the areas that are in focus just to sell your effect, sell the illusion, so to speak. When I wasn't recording, I added one more point here just to bring back a little more detail here. And right here, I think I'm going to click on this and add a little bit more blur to this area right there. And I think I'm totally happy. And when you're totally happy, all you need to do is click OK. And that'll send us back into Photoshop. And now here we are. So here is our before. So now you notice your eye goes up into these buds and down in here. You don't know where to look. You kind of know to look in here. But now we're helping you to know where to look when I turn this on. But you see how creative Boca can help you to draw focus to the area that you want people to see and that's what i mean by that i'm forcing my viewer to look at this flower because to me that's the part i want them to see well there it is everyone bringing focus to your subjects with the use of creative bokeh give those blur gallery filters a try i think you'll really enjoy them they're not that hard to use but they can give you really great and interesting results i love them and i use them all the time in my flower photography especially but again it works in any type of photography if you enjoyed the tutorial today please give it a like share it with your friends and if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.